Hey guys, still here and welcome back to another, well, Wargame Red Dragon deck review. It has been ages since I did one of these, but recently on a live stream I did an analysis of both the deck of this person and his gameplay. The gameplay video is following tomorrow. I wanted to get these things out in two separate parts so that we can have feedback on specifically the deck and feedback specifically on the uh, gameplay. It is his first deck. It is also his first gameplay, again, that coming tomorrow. So uh, please keep that in mind. The way that he's setting this thing up as a USSR motorized deck, um, well, there are various ways to do that. Uh, the first argument could be don't play a USSR motorized deck at all. But then again, we're going to have a bit of discussion on that. It is part of a live stream, which means that on the top right hand side, you'll be able to see a chat window. I hope it's not too obnoxious. And uh, if you have any suggestions for this newer player, then please submit those in comments. I'm all for constructive criticism, uh, destructive slash negative criticism really doesn't help anybody. So please be a nice person and help out if you can. If you want to see more of these live streams, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified immediately when I'm going live. If you find this type of video useful, please give it a like, that way more people can find it. And hopefully we can build a better community together. Thank you, I hope you will enjoy the video. This was not the obby. And he sent in uh, my, his first game. I want to learn what I did wrong and what I can do better. In short, criticism. Also tried building a Soviet motorized deck. All right, let's have a look at the motorized deck first. It is always a bit difficult to just critique a deck without really knowing what somebody wants to do. Because decks are, at least I can usually compare them to tool cases. It's like you have a toolbox which has all sorts of stuff in it. And for example, if you're gonna be fixing your sink, you need a specific set of tools. You might need a wrench, you might need a hammer. Uh, you're not that likely to need a saw, I suppose. So that's something that you have to keep in mind when you're building a deck. What this deck is about, I don't know. He says he tried building a motorized deck. Okay. Uh, let's see. Logistics. It's been ages. Ages since I did a deck review. What's the benefit to motorized? USSR motorized. Not that much. USSR motorized gets better infantry in a motorized deck. You get better reconnaissance. And you get better vehicles. What you're sacrificing is a lot of armor opportunity. Um, support's quite good. Helos are not that affected and aircraft are mostly available. So I don't exactly see that many benefits to a motorized deck. Unless you're playing a tactical. In which case I use a motorized deck to, for example, get a couple of elite Spatsnaz. Or uh, get a couple of elite VDV that I can send to a specific position. But overall, especially if you're a newer player, don't go for a general or don't go for a um, any specialized deck. If you want to go for any, go for a mechanized, but just try for a general deck first because that gives you more flexibility. It gives you just that flexibility that you need to adapt to well to whatever situation you get thrown into. Anyway, logistics. Uh, you got logistics coming in by air and by road. Yeah, nothing too special here. Um, I would probably get the command unit to come in through a halo. Because the reason for that, um, the halo gives you more flexibility. Let's say you're on the map with water. Or let's say you're on the map with um, any position where you either need to quickly get a command unit to or where you need to get a command unit to flank a position. The Ural can do it, but it's slow. So get it in an MI-8 or the MIIT or whichever you prefer, but make sure you get it in one of these because it's going to be very useful. And ideally, as Chad's pointing out, the MTV, because it has those S-13 rocket pods and those things are very deadly to lightly armored and unarmored units. Infantry. Modestrelki, Modestrelki 90. Uh, make these as cheap as possible. Yeah, BTR 60 PB. These are for your infantry grinder. 
So anything that is going to be a long, hard infantry fight, keep throwing in Modus Dwelki. You got 8 in the BTR 90. This I would swap around. I would reduce the veterancy here because the BTR 90 is such a great unit. It has a grenade launcher and an autocannon. It's amphibious. It's ridiculously fast. It has a modicum of armor. Make sure that you get these things, well, as many of these things as possible. You only get two cards of them. Gorner Strelke, um, hmm. I'm not that big of a fan of. The Gornos are generally... It's hard to get their value. If you want to use them, at least use the Gorno 90. Because they got that 26 AP weapon as opposed to the 15 that you can see here. The Metis M is just far more deadly. Yes, you're paying 10 points more, but you might be able to kill that 60, 70, 80 point tank as opposed to not being able to hard it most of the time. So I'd say here, swap this to Gorno's. And considering you're not that likely to use a whole lot of them, um, make sure that you have them at the veterancy ranking, which also boosts their accuracy. Oh shit, uh, the, the Gorno 90. And what you can do with these guys is grab a position quickly and then wait for your motorized deck to catch up. In which case, bring them in the MI8 MTV. Because these are going to be able to suppress, for example, incoming transports or incoming infantry while the rest of your deck is arriving. VDV-90. VDV-90 are really good units. I really enjoy using these. You got them in the MI8T... MITV, I would again recommend this, but it's a bit expensive, especially if you're going to throw them into a grinder. MIAT, slightly cheaper, but only by 5 points. So if it's only 5 points, just go with these. More useful. Spatsnaz. Um, in this case, the Spatsnaz are going to come in when you absolutely want everything in a town dead. So make sure that they have uh, wheels, not airborne, because airborne, they're going to be in trouble most of the time and since you can only have these guys at uh, elite make sure you have as many of them as possible so not the BTR 90 because you only get six BTR 70 you get nine of them so I fully agree with this choice and then you got some Igla where's your HGM group where's your concourse you got the old concourse no. No, we're not doing that. The Conquerors versus the Conquerors M are substantially different. Uh, you got 23 AP versus 20. But beyond that, you got a bit more accuracy. And this is going to be important. This, this three points of AP. It is going to be the difference between doing damage to something and not doing damage to something. The extra accuracy also helps. Uh, these are... At least in my book, they're area denial weapons. You make sure that you have them in a position where they have as much terrain coverage as possible so that they're capable of quickly engaging any vehicle that gets close. Any vehicle that gets within a 26-25 meter range is going to get killed off. Hopefully. And considering that you're a motorized deck, um, I might bring two of these. It really depends on what map you're building a deck for. Supports, Nona's, um, these work. I'm a bit more of a fan of the Nona SVK because they can relocate faster. These things do 50 and 110. These things do 80 and 150. Yes, you're, ten, you're paying 10 points more for them, but that mobility is just very useful. Not Igla N for added uh, HE. Yes, the Igla N would be also a better idea. You got 4 HE here, 5 HE there. Most helos are going to be at the 4 or 5 HE range. You might... Let's see, a Lynx, for example. A Lynx, I think a Lynx is 5 hit points. So that's something that the Igla N would be slightly better at. The Strela. Don't use the Strela. These things are terribly, terribly useless. They don't have the range. They don't have, well, especially not against airplanes. They don't fire very accurately. 
and their HE is dreadful. It's overall a terrible unit. Supports, I would say swap these out and go for the Nona SVK. Uh, you got another unit of Veselec. In this case, I'd say not really. Yes, it's nice to be plowing around with all of these guys, but you don't really need them. Osa AKM. These are really nice NTR units, especially when it comes to hunting down helicopters. Uh, you got the Strela 10M as a fire and forget radar, or sorry, non radar guided units. Briusa. You could go with um, either the Grat, the Urzgan, or the Smirch. These two are capable of very quickly suppressing larger areas, and then your art, uh, sorry, your infantry can push in. The Smirch is for killing or at least wiping out more heavily armored stuff. It might not kill them, but it will heavily damage them, and once again, your infantry can then push in and wipe them out. Yurigan is far better than the Grad. Agree. Uh, you got better range. You got better high explosive. You also got a better price tag. <laughs> or worse. These things are 120. These are 75. Mobility. These slightly win in mobility. 65, 75 off-road speed. There's not really anything that I would do too much different about the NTR. Keep in mind that these Bryusa are radar guided. They'll have to get micromanaged. And aside from micromanagement, uh, you can also use them in an anti-infantry role. They will do a ton of damage, but in the vehicle tab, yeah, you got the uh, the Afghanski. The Afghanski are, when you're trying to have these things kill infantry, they're better. Because they got better range, they're not going to get targeted by anti-air. Uh, their armor even is slightly better. Just use the Afghanski if you want to very quickly massacre infantry. Tanks, you want to get the T-55 AMV. Yep, Bastion's a good missile. Not terribly accurate, not terribly dangerous, but it just keeps stuff at bay, usually. The rest of the tanks are pretty trash. I am not a fan of most of these tanks. Recon. You got infantry and healers being flown in. That's good. And you got them being driven in. Why in the BTR-90? I imagine it's because it's fast. It, well, let me step back a second. It's also going to depend on what sort of a role you want this infantry to take. Razvetka, for example, or I believe it should actually be Razvetki, uh, because Razvetki supposedly is plural. I usually use these as passive spotters. You have a lot of them. You generally won't need this much unless you're going to deploy them in a combat role, which is... Well, not very good for what these guys can do. They don't have a machine gun. They're only a five-man team. Don't use them in an offensive role. Just passive spotting. The moment that they hit the battlefield, turn their weapons off. Um, I would always want to have one cheap reconnaissance unit that I can deploy, like the Razvetka and the BTR-60 PB. Uh, the Ural is even cheaper. Mm. But it's a pretty terrible off-road. These are far better off-roaders. You got the K-52. That's pretty much a must-have. These are seat missiles. Can be used to take down enemy anti-air. Igla V for taking down helos. And a cannon for dealing with most of the other stuff. Uh, why the PB? Because it's cheapest. The BTR-70 is slightly better. It doesn't really matter that much. But you're right. You should arguably take the BTR-70 for this. Yeah, especially if availability is the same. PT-85. I probably wouldn't use this thing, though. I probably would not use the PT-85. For the simple reason that it is very fragile. Its gun is not good. Its ATGM is only going to give its position away. So, mm, no thank you. Instead... I would want to have these, the BRDM-3. Very mobile, good enough optics to go on the offensive, and they have the autocannon. So I would bring probably 13 of these. Um, oh, Razvetka is right, okay. 
either bring them at hardened and see if you actually go through all 13 or go through veteran or just pick them at veteran and see if you need more of them. If you find yourself using more, go for the lower veterancy. This is going to vary from player to player. I'm not going to say that there is a a must-have playstyle for this because I don't believe that Wargame has a must-have playstyle. Grey Ghost, where is the Russian Ekrano plan? Um, it is not part of this game. So not these. Uh, we have freed up a couple of points at this stage. These are interesting to have. They're a pretty useful tool, sniper teams. They allow you to scout positions without being detected. I would not bring two of them, like not, not two cards, but one card is fine. They have exceptional optics and very, very few units do. So make sure that you have um, a position that you really need scouted. That is either, for example, completely open terrain or otherwise a position where you're likely to get detected with a, a recon team like Spatsnaz Gru. Send in the Spatsnaz VMF and they will not get detected. Just make sure that the transport does not follow them around. Drop them off and then just have the transport back off. Because right now, if this thing follows you around, you're going to be in trouble. Vehicles. You got Napalm Tank, Storm. Um, I'm always a bit sad when I see this 20 AP. I would like for this to be more. Conquerors M. You got the Afghanskis. Got the Jalo. These are great units. Really, really nice units. Their gun isn't that powerful. It's not going to kill a tank, for example, unless you get a side shot. But if you get a side shot at a tank, you're going to be firing twice before that tank returns fire. Because this thing has 20 rounds a minute rate of fire. It also has a very, a very small ammo supply. So I would not recommend that you keep these things on the front line for prolonged periods of time. Just take a couple of shots, ambush some transports and back off. The Norov... Very situational. Um, it's a tank destroyer, which is generally not used. I think the last time I might have used these is in a campaign, and only when I absolutely had to. But they're just not that good. I, I can't justify their 35-point price point. I just don't need a gun that does 13 at a, a rate of fire, which is pretty decent, but no. The 122.54 is decent, says Raymond. Yeah, I would agree. Um, use these on the flanks. Use these on positions where you're not likely to face anything bigger than a transport. Also, the moment that anything that looks like a tank comes into range, um, you're going to be dead. Because the tank is going to be shooting you before you can shoot, uh, before you can return fire. It only has 1925 meter range. Four frontal armor is not going to be enough to stop most of the shells. Only in the weakest tanks will you actually be able to hold yourself. We only have to hold the position. Uh, these I sometimes have in a deck as flank defenders. And uh, you can just throw them on positions where you just need a unit. It doesn't even matter what. For example, a picket line. These can be useful. Because a helo flies over and you're going to be wiping it out. You probably won't even notice that you're wiping it out. If your unit starts to take fire, uh, okay. Then you will start to very, very quickly not have a BTR. Aside from that, you should be fine. Just half these is a bit of cannon fodder. And you can go with the 10-point units. This one has a better rate of fire, but that's the only difference. So just 18 of those, highest veterancy. And good luck trying to go through all of those. Um, as for a 14 complement of concourse, I wouldn't go with that many. If you have that many points available, I would go for another Conqueror's M card. And then again, taste will vary here. Um, some people would absolutely go with another card of Conqueror's M because it's very mobile. Some players, like myself, might be more defensive and go with the Conqueror's M uh, HGM team. Helos, we got Neakula, 
please take these at trained because they're too good. They're capable of killing quite a few units. And because they kill units very quickly, especially higher end units with all those Vicar missiles and helicopters with Iglas, they're able to get veterancy auto automatically. You don't really have to train them up that much. Am, mm, am I 4 AV? No. I'm saying no because the Milyutka P is dreadful. Uh, your rocket pods don't really do that much. And, well... If I'm going to bring rocket pods, I will bring these. Because they carry even more rockets. But good luck trying to, <laughs> trying to fire all of those. Um, this is a suppression weapon. It's utterly inaccurate. But... Mm, it does do damage. And it can do a lot of damage. Now you got the Akula and the MI-28. They're a bit superfluous. They both achieve pretty much the same role. And that is something that I don't really like. Because it's like you have two hammers in your in your suitcase or in your, your toolbox. Which is not necessarily bad. But they both do the same thing. They both kill tanks. This one is more of a ground attacker because it also has the rocket pods, but very, very few of them. So these can actually take some uh, helicopters down. But the Akula uh, is a bit different. It takes down tanks and it takes down helicopters. It does not deal with any ground vehicles very well. Abhishek, welcome. Yes, this is your deck that I'm discussing. This is your deck. Um, so the MI4 a MI4AV, absolutely not. The MI24V, however, this one I would have. The MI24V with Iglos can very quickly counter a helicopter offensive. And it's going to be very useful. Because sometimes you just need to get those helicopters dealt with quickly. This thing arrives on the scene very fast, 330 kph. And on top of that... Um, they have a Yak B and Iglas to deal with helicopters. So, again, I would probably see what works for you. Um, it might be the MI-24s uh, that you only use two of them. Just make sure you don't call them in at the same time, just split them up. But uh, if you find that you need more, go with trained. The MI-24 VP is very good, yes. This is a really nice helicopter. You got the rocket pods, you got the Cocon M to deal with any tanks, and you got the uh, GSH-30K, which is an autocannon, 30mm, much improved over the Yak. This thing can penetrate armor, this thing cannot. And that's a substantial difference. This thing does carry a lot more ammo. Um, these generally run out of ammo way sooner than these do, however. But the DMA-24 VP, good helo. I would have those because they can fulfill so many roles. And when it comes to the, the Akula or the MI-28, um, it's a bit of personal preference. And it also depends, I'd say, on what sort of anti-air you already have. If you, for example, don't have Iglas and you need a more mobile anti-helicopter force, then have the Akula and MI-24V. If you know, if you think, you know, you know what? Um, I'm fine for when it comes to dealing with helicopters because I've got my Osas, my Strela, my Beusa. I even have the BRTR-152 Echo. I can probably do without the Akula. It's a personal preference. Anyway, I still have 55 points available. Oh, sorry, 5 points available, so I can see what he has here. Uh, no fighter. Oof. No fighter is dangerous. The problem with having no fighter is that you cannot control the airspace. By the time that an aircraft is within your interior range, especially the interior range of a motorized deck, then they have already released their bombs. Um, you need a fighter. You need to be able to control the airspace because your infantry is going to get killed off quickly. And yes, these are capable fighters, but I prefer something better range. Um, they only have a range of 4.2 kilometers against planes. I would very much like to see the SU-27PU in here, or the Yak-141 if you're going to go a little cheaper than that. 
These carry four uh, short range missiles, sorry, four, yeah, four shorter range missiles and six long range missiles. These things carry two long range and two short range. Their ECM is a bit worse, their price tag is a bit lower. I would try and have these things. Um, and I'm going to leave it to chat to say whether it's going to be uh, one or two. I would probably lean towards two because then if you lose one of the aircraft, uh, you still have another one. If you lose your one elite SU-27PU due to a defense or due to something that's going to kill it that you haven't spotted yet, then, well, let's say half of your anti-air force or half of your air force is going to be in trouble. Yeah, and see, chat doesn't even really have a concisive answer. I'm seeing two, one, two, one, two will miss every shot. One, two, 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 you will miss. <laughs> Try it. Try it, I'd say. Just um, pick. In this case, I'm going to pick one. It does mean you have to take no chances with the PU. Do not chase down enemy fighters over their airspace. If you do, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you 180 points and quite a lot of anti-air potential. Anyway, um, aside from that, we have the Yak, the IL-102, the MiG-27, and let's sacrifice that one. This one is a 500 kilogram bomber. When it comes to planes, I usually want a diverse setup so I can deal with most threats. I want to be able to deal with um, larger groups of infantry. IL-102 does that. I want to be able to deal with tanks, and the MiG-27K does that. Uh, among other planes, you could, for example, pick the SG-27M and you have both a fighter and an ATGM plane. But if you lose this, well, you just lost both <laughs> your anti-air and your ATGM force. Um, these are an option. You also have the 25T. These might look good, but they are very situational. If you want to make use of these, you have to make sure that anything that can shoot upwards is dead. Absolutely, positively dead. In the campaign, these things are fun. Outside of the campaign and in real life, I would be very careful with them. You need to have an escort of a siege craft or a plane, like a, a fighter group, uh, two SU-27s, uh, uh, SU uh, the meme MiGs. You need something to control the airspace, because otherwise you're going to be in trouble. Grey Ghost, does the BTR-152 look like the US half-track? Yes, it does. Um, so, you can, deal with anti or you can deal with tanks, you can deal with larger groups of infantry. This one is too slow. 600 kilometers means that you're not going to get to the target, and it means that you're going to get shot down before you get there, especially with 10 ECM. And then even if you do get there, you are, well, you're going to drop 500 kilogram bombs, but they probably won't do that much. What would I pick here? Uh, probably the SU-24M. The reason being, if I have a larger group of infantry, for example, I'm fighting in the woods, I want to plow through a whole section of woods so that my infantry can move up. If... This thing drops. It does not drop very heavy bombs, but it drops a whole load of them. And that's going to at least start wiping out a bunch of the infantry. Um, and thereby, my infantry is going to have an easier time pushing into that area. So, for example, if it was the forest, I would then send in the Spatsnaz, followed by VDV or Modestrelki. Ideally VDV, because Modestrelki are not that great. And then again, you have the whole discussion of should you be using a motorized deck anyway. Um, what else? The MiG-27S and 29M, these are pretty decent, but the cluster bombs are very situational. Let's see, what would I do with five more points here? I would probably not get another aircraft. The tank tab is dreadful. Uh, I would probably get another reconnaissance unit. Because you are playing a motorized deck, you're very mobile. Uh, BRDM-2, possibly, the Plamia. This is an interesting little jeep. It's 
It's grenade launcher means that you might want to go on the offensive, um, but they're too expensive to lose and they have zero armor. Somebody sneezes in their general direction and you're going to be in trouble. UAZ is just a passive spotter, has no guns whatsoever. Uh, maybe the M24K. Because these are also doubling as reconnaissance units with exceptional optics. They're fast and they have a lot of rocket pods in case you want to, let's say, be a command vehicle to a pulp real quick. Chad is suggesting seed aircraft. Yes, that can also work. A seed aircraft, so suppression of enemy air defenses. That way you're going to be able to engage any um, enemy, enemy anti-air defenses so long as they're radar guided. The 25 point UAZ is trash. You don't need the 24K when you have the VP. True, um, but I find that the 24K plus the 24 VP is an excellent killer package. If you throw an M24V, you also have something that can deal with helicopters and other flying menaces. And the other points, um, well, I'm a big fan of just experimenting. Just trying out different things. See if you need more support. See if you need another vehicle. Um, try a seed unit. See if that works. If you don't really like it, just toss it out. Just after a game, see if you have used the units. And for example, if you have played five games with this deck and you find that you just don't use the, I don't know, the Gorner Strokey, toss them out. Throw in something else that you might do want. And there will be people who tell you that um, the deck is trash, the deck is great. It's going to go all ways. There definitely is a meta. There is definitely a meta of units that work best or that are ideal I don't really believe in the fact that you have to play the whole meta, please. It's a job, playing the whole meta, playing what is absolutely the right thing to do. It's not something that I particularly like to do. I just want to use a deck, I want to have fun with my friends, playing together. It doesn't really have to always make perfect sense. And yes, good point. It depends a lot on the map, uh, what unit you will use. On an open map, you'll potentially use more ATGM units. On, uh, let's say, death row, you're going to lose, or well, you're going to lose and use a lot of infantry units. It's going to depend on the map. All right, now onto the gameplay.